Howdy Google Ads fans and welcome back. We're going to continue on here with SEMrush, uh, looking at some keyword research ideas, and but now sort of go into how we can get some keyword research ideas from our competitors to get a sense of what their advertising footprint has been, what they've been advertising on, uh, and see if we could, again, have that healthy respect for the competition and get some uh, good ideas that we might have missed out on from the competition. And so some really cool tools here in SEMrush. And I'm going to try to go through them quickly because a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory, but still very, very helpful. So now we're back here in advertising research. I'm going to start that search again for office chairs real quick. This is what we were working on in the last lecture. We see the keyword overview for office chairs. If you remember, we're going to go back to phrase match, look at view full report. And we're going to go back to the, the, the report and the keyword magic tool. And there's a couple things going on here. Again, 9,065 keywords. I don't have any advanced filters on. Um, it's showing sort of everything. Now, if I want to go to broad match, I can go to broad match, and it's going to jump up to what, what 37,000 keywords. And there's a really cool tool here in SEMrush where you could toggle from all to questions. And if we remember a few lectures ago, we spoke about how people talk to search engines. A lot of people ask that question directly, and that represents a certain buyer psyche. It represents somebody who's looking for more, for, you know, who's more likely to be looking for the answer to a certain question. And if you're, and of course, the answer to a question doesn't necessarily mean a blog, blog post. It could mean a product. It could mean a service, right? So if you click the word questions over here, you click this button, it'll show you a list of the keywords that are in question format. So if we see here, where to buy office chairs, where to buy office chairs near me, how to clean office chair, how to fix a sinking office chair, how to fix office chair. And, and this is a place where you're actually going to get a lot of really good negative, keywords idea, negative keyword ideas. So if we are running in our account a broad match version of office chair, we now know that how to fix or how to repair, those would be really good negative keywords that would probably go to the account irrelevant list. And this is actually one of the biggest mistakes um, or the things that people really overlook when they're working on negative keyword lists is they forget to add um, these types of informational queries that are specifically geared towards a person looking for an article or a do-it-yourself video or um, you know service or something like that. And, and most products and services have a lot of their counterpart, you know, query-based or question-based keywords and search terms that are not relevant to their business. So Poppin does not want to bid on how to fix a leather office chair, right? So um, how to disassemble an office chair over here, how to reupholster an office chair. So these are some really good, so reupholster would be a great negative keyword. Um, and even how to, how to as a broad match negative keyword would be, would be fantastic. How to remove hair from an office chair wheels, right? You see that these random, random uh, searches that, that could cost you money if you get these ad clicks uh, for these search terms. So that's a really good tool to use in SEMrush as well. Now I want to go back to where I was before. So if I click back and go back again and enter this keyword overview tool, I'm going to type in a domain. So we can start off by typing in our own domain, but I'm going to type in um, one of our competitors in the auction, which is Staples. So I'm going to go to staples.com and click enter and it's going to give me a domain overview for staples.com. Now sometimes you'll see that you're not getting a lot of data and that could be because you've searched in the keyword overview tool as opposed to the domain overview tool. So up here we could toggle from keyword overview to domain overview. And now I'm going to start seeing a lot more data. So at the very top we see 422,000 uh, visits through paid traffic, 10.3 million visits through organic traffic, 18.5 million backlinks. So if you could, you could do a lot of SEO research. Um, and over here you see some cool stuff. You see that, that Staples seems to have been growing in their organic volume, um, but sort of staying pretty static with their Google Ads volume. And again, these are real serious estimates. Um, I've, we have a lot of clients that we manage these campaigns for. We know exactly what their volume from Google Ads are, and we come in here and we see that either they're seriously undershooting it or seriously overshooting um, the traffic estimates in SEMrush. So I'm not bashing SEMrush, it's a great tool, but you have to understand that certain metrics are not reliable, and that's important to understand, and it's important to understand and speak to clients. So what are we looking for here? We want to figure out what search terms related to office chairs is Staples bidding on, and what percentage of their overall search marketing traffic is coming in through those search terms and through those keywords. And we could do that by going down and looking at the paid search section. So if we click this 422K, the number under paid search, it's going to bring us into a detailed paid search report, which we're in now. I could go to the new version, but let's just stay here because I just want to show you the concept. And, and SEMrush is always changing how things look and you could always, you know, 
um, you could always find what you're looking for in, if it's, even if the dashboard for SCM Rush looks a little bit different. So I see 71,000 keywords. These are keywords that, that Staples is showing ads for, and we see some interesting information. This is the keyword, whether or not it was an ad, so it's sure it's an ad. If you hover over the little yellow line, you could actually see what the ad was, which is fantastic because this, while this is not what this lecture is about, this is a great way of getting ad copy ideas. If you want to find out what your competitors are doing with ads on, on certain keywords, you come to this tool in SEMrush and you could see exactly what their ads have been. So it's really, really neat. Um, but over here, you see the traffic percentage the cost percentage, and that's really the two columns you want to focus on because you're able to get a sense of how aggressively are they targeting a specific keyword and how valuable is this keyword to them. If they're spending a good percentage of their cost on a keyword, then that's something which tells you that this is a keyword that they rely on and that they've probably been running ads on for quite some time. If it's a keyword that uh, they have, they're have, they getting a, a large percentage of their traffic from, then again, it's a really good keyword to be bidding on and it's probably a good keyword for you to have in your account as long as it's relevant. So obviously, staples is not a keyword that Poppin cares about, which is why we have to go ahead and filter. So we click again by advanced filter, and we want to include keyword that contains, and again, if you, if you toggle down, you could include or exclude keyword, keyword type, you could change the different um, dimensions that you're filtering. We're gonna stick with keyword containing, let's start off with office. You know what, let's just start off with chair, right? Let's just start off with chair and see what happens. You could add more filters as we go, but we're going to apply this one for now. So now we're down to around 307 keywords as we see here. But I see a lot of these searches have the word staples in them, right? Staples office chairs, staple office chairs, staples chair, staples chairs, staples chairs, right? And great, if I'm running a competitor campaign, then these would be some good keywords that I might export and have in, in my competitor account that's targeting staples, right? Absolutely. But let's say I'm not looking to set up a competitor campaign right now. That's not really what I'm what I'm here to do. I'm here to get some new keyword ideas for my general office chair campaigns and start thinking about themes. So I could add another filter in SEM or so I'm going to add one more over here under filter and instead of including I'm going to exclude keywords that contain staples and I'm going to click, go ahead and click apply. Now I'm down to about 183 keywords and now I'm going to start doing some analysis. So I'm going to Make sure I'm filtered by volume, and SEMrush usually does filter by volume. I probably just went from low to high. Um, okay, so now I'm going from high to low. Office chairs near me. Office chair seat cushion. Swivel office chair. Now swivel, that's actually something that I don't think we, uh, we had in our list. So swivel office chairs is something that I'm going to select. I'm going to, I'm going to um, bookmark it. I'm going to write it down on my notepad. I'm going to put it down in my, in my Excel spreadsheet, and we're going to jump into our Excel spreadsheet in the next, in the next lecture. And there's a few things I want to look at here. So I see the volume estimates. I see that it has more volume than a search for gray office chair, less volume than a, than a search for office chairs near me. Office chairs near me. I see the relative um, CPC, three dollars and forty-five cents estimates. Um, I could see the page that Staples is using for their destination URL for the ads, um, and I could see the traffic percentage the results and the trend. So if I hover over the ad, so say I'm writing ads and I say, hey, I want to get some ad copy idea. What staple, when, when somebody searches for swivel office chairs and Staples shows an ad, right, and Staples is a company to respect, they're a big company, they've probably been optimizing their campaigns for a long time, we, we, we could assume that a good company is A-B testing their ads. Let's take a look at their ad copy. So we're going to hover over here, office chair Staples, shop a selection of office chairs, yeah, pretty bad ad. So, but again, this is an old ad. It's not showing the the newer formats, etc. But we could still get some ideas. Most of the time, you're going to want to come up with your own creative ideas. But you're going to come across competitors, and as you hover over some of these ideas, you're going to see some really cool ideas. You're going to see how good competitors that have been doing this for a long time are using their ads. And go ahead and steal, steal ideas. All artists steal. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Um, that's part of the nature of this game. If, you are, if you're int intelligent enough and you're sophisticated enough to have software where you're able to sort of spy on your competitors and, and get a sense of what ad copy has been working for them, by all means, go ahead and use it. If you find a good idea and you think it's going to work for you, go ahead and use it. So swivel office chair, best ergonomic chair, purple desk chair is another one we didn't think of. Um, Tempur-Pedic office chair, that's interesting. Uh, that might be a negative keyword for Poppin. Uh, workshop chair. We haven't thought of workshop. So as so you could see, so the, the now all this this Google research, the keyword research that we've been doing should be coming together. We looked at related searches. We looked at auto suggest. We asked friends and family. We looked at our competitor websites. We're using the Google keyword 
tool. We're using Google's internal suggestions. We're using our own intuition. We're using SEMrush. We're using Uber Suggest. We're using Suvel, right? So we're using all these tools and literally in every one that we've been to, we found ideas that were not overlaps between these other tools, that we found new ideas in every tool that we used. That's why it's so important to not just rely on one tool for your keyword research and your keyword organization, but to get a sense of your industry. If you're, if you're bringing on a new account for a client, and this happens to us every single day um, here at Adventure Media, we'll, we'll be working on an, a, an account that we've had for only a few weeks or a couple months and we're still, it's a big business, we're learning the industry. And as we look at building out new campaigns and as we jump into these tools, we inevitably see so many ideas that we didn't think of or a different tool might not have might, have, might not have uncovered. And the more you research, the more time you spend on dedicating time for this research, the greater ideas, the, the more ideas you're gonna have. And again, that's ideas, three sort of categories. You have negative keywords, positive keywords and themes, thematically related groups of keywords. Um, rocking bag chair, stationary office chair. And again, these are, is what, these are the keywords that Staples is literally, are literally bidding on. And let's say we wanted to take a look at um, Wayfair, right? Another company, Wayfair.com. Another competitor, huge company, sells a ton of, off, sells a ton of furniture. And I'm gonna just do Wayfair.com in domain overview. Again, 976, even more search terms than Staples, way more search terms than Staples, 42 million um, organic hits. So if I go ahead and click into the paid search section, I can go in there, I could see that there's around 150,000 keywords tracked. And again, I could start doing some advanced filtering. So I'm gonna open up advanced filtering and I'm gonna do include keyword that contains chair. And I'm gonna exclude keywords that contain free and I'm gonna exclude keywords that contain Wayfair, right? So now we're starting off with what, 150,000 and change, and let's see what we come down to when I click apply. All right, listen, now we down to 6,000, right? So we just knocked out over 140,000 keywords to get to what's relevant to us. And I could go ahead and search sort by volume. It's already sorted by volume. And here we see again, gaming chair. And gaming chair is something that has come up over and over again as a really, really important negative for us to have in the account. And we already, we already have it. Desk chair, recliner chair. So some of these are already things that we've been seeing. Dining room chairs, interesting. Computer chair, zero gravity chair, kids chairs, um, arm chair. Now, a lot of these are good negative keyword ideas as well. Again, you're getting a sense of what other competitors are search, are, what your competitors are bidding on. And again, you could hover over and see, okay, zero gravity chair, Wayfair zero gravity chair, reclining chair, free and speedy delivery. What, what sort of calls to action are they including in their ads? Uh, what copy are they including in their ads? It's really, really important. I could also modify my filter at any time. So say I wanna get even more specific. I could look at a um, only search terms that they're bidding on the contain office chair. And maybe there will be, maybe there won't be, but let's see what happens. We're gonna, we had 6,000 keywords before, and now we have 346. Okay, now we're down to an actually, we're actually down to a manageable amount of keywords. So I see cheap office chair, white office chair, white office chair, um, and, and there we go. White is another important theme. We're seeing white is a, a popular search. Um, home office chair, pink office chair, uh, tufted office chair, right? Tufted, that's something that we didn't think of. Does Poppin sell tufted office chairs? Well, if they don't sell tufted office chairs, then we just came up with another great idea for another negative keyword. We now have another idea for a great negative keyword that we didn't even get by originally using SEMrush using the keyword overview tool. We had to use the competitive analysis to find tufted as a negative keyword, and now our account's gonna be better for it. The campaigns will be spending less money on this click and even if any one of these given negative keywords is not high volume and it's gonna be $10, it would have been $10 or $15 or $20 a month in wasted spend, still, when you multiply that by, by potentially hundreds of really good negative keywords that you discover using these tools, you're in a much, much better position and that money really adds up and the savings really adds up. And two things happen sort of in conjunction with one another. One, the, comp the company or you, you as the advertiser spend less money on things that won't convert, on clicks that won't convert, and then that money could be allocated, the budget that you have left over could be actually allocated to the keywords and the search terms that are converting better. Again, this is why keyword research at this phase is so, so important. I wanna show you another couple of really quick tools in SEMrush. If you click um, competitors under advertising research, 
it's going to continue on with Wayfair.com because that's the uh, website we were looking at. But this chart over here on the upper right hand corner is really, really neat because it shows you how you stack up, which is Wayfair.com over here, which has the number of paid keywords around 150K with some of the other competitors and where they're holding in, in paid search traffic and number of keywords. So we see JCPenney up here has a lot more traffic than us and has a lot more uh, paid search keywords, Google Ads keywords. And then you see a bunch of these other competitors here. So Hayneedle, Overstock, House.com, Joss and Main. So I would not necessarily have known. This is a great place to come and find who your competitors are. So say we were to come up here and look at Poppin.com and because we want to know like who are our competitors. Who, who are the people that we're, we're sharing space in the auction with? Who are the people that we're going up against? And if we come to this section over here, I see Poppin. It has around an estimated 3K keywords and around you know 15K or so, 17K in paid search traffic. And again, this is something to compare like intra SEM rush, um, only within SEM rush. So we could know we could know with certainty that Court.com has fewer keywords. Not that this number of 1.5K is accurate, but we know that it's less than whatever you know Poppin is advertising. So here's some interesting. Competitors that I might not have known existed. Cymax.com. Uh, it looks like nationalbusinessfurniture.com up here that has a lot more. Office Furniture to go. Uh, so now these are some competitors that I could start researching. So if I scroll down and I say, okay, Office Furniture to go has the highest competition level. They have 414 common keywords. I could see the specific keywords that Office Furniture to go has in common with us. So I can go ahead and click this 414 number and it's going to bring me to a keyword report with these pre-built filters. And it's gonna show me which keywords both we and this competitor are advertising on. So office furniture stores, oval office desk, rolling file cabinet, etc. And we could see the result on the page for a given keyword for each of these companies. So for example, office furniture stores pop in and showing one result that might either be an organic or a paid result or a Google shopping ad. Well, office furniture go is showing three results. Um, so you see a lot of this interesting uh, data by first looking for a specific competitor and then going into the shared keywords. So just to wrap up, SEMrush is a really, really big tool. There's a lot of cool things that you could do with it. I highly recommend that you get yourself a subscription, at least sign up for the free plan, and you can start getting these ideas. But most importantly, you have keyword research, finding negative and keyword positive ideas by looking at keyword overview reports, getting a sense of competitiveness, getting a sense of um, estimated cost, comparing keyword to keyword, but then also going into the competitive analysis tool. Take a look at two things in the competitive analysis tool. What your competitors are actually doing, what your competitors are actually bidding on, which keywords in, in whatever campaign or ad group you're building, which keywords are bringing in the most or, or a high degree of their percentage of their overall search traffic to their site. What are, their, what are they spending on? But then also using the competitive tools in SEMrush to get a sense of who your competitors actually are and what paid keywords you both share. And of course, that's only going to be data that that's going to be data that you'll be able to get once your campaigns have been running for a while. But if a client comes on, this is such a valuable thing to do. If a client comes on, they've been running their AdWords account, the Google Ads account for a couple of years, and you can send them a report from SEMrush that, that shows them, hey, your number one competitor, these are the 200 keywords that we're both bidding on together, and we're gonna do as best as we can to get a higher place in the auction, to um, bid more efficiently, to create better landing pages for these keywords, whatever it may, whatever it may be. It's super, super powerful stuff. So that's SEMrush. That's how to do some keyword research, some keyword planning in SEMrush. Um, and now we're going to start getting into keyword organization. We've gotten a lot of our keyword ideas. We have good ideas for themes. But now we're going to bring everything into Excel. And you can do these in other tools as well. But I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel because that's sort of um, my preferred method of when I'm building out a new campaign from scratch, how we could conceptualize themes, and then how we start working on match types, modifiers, things like that. Um, so I hope that this has been interesting for you. I hope you now have a good understanding of the value a tool like SEMrush could provide. And I look forward to seeing you guys in a couple seconds in the very next lecture.